We are back, guys, for episode number nine, podcast number nine today. I am super, 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 super excited. You, you have no idea how excited I am about this. I've been even keeping it uh, to ourselves kind of thing. I want to tell everybody, but we kind of kept it to ourselves. Today, we have two very, 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 very special people with us today. We have uh, Ryan, who is with us. He's the community manager. And we have Kalia, who's the content uh, and social media manager. You guys know them. Uh, you've been very, uh, you know, if you've been on social media or Discord or and you have uh, you know exactly who they are. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys introduce yourselves. Uh, Ryan, talk to us, man. Tell me about yourself. Tell us what's going on, and uh, yo, tell us all about yourself. What you do? Yeah, no worries. First of all, thanks, Broom and WT, for like introducing me and Kalia to the podcast today. We um, we really appreciate everything you guys do. So um, let's get started. Um, so a bit about myself. So I'm um, something that I guess a lot of people don't know about myself is that I'm currently a final year university student. So I study at the Bachelor, uh, sorry, I study at University of New South Wales. So, um, and it's a degree in a Bachelor of Commerce, a major in marketing. So funny story about this is that uh, Howie and Derek, they actually used to go to this university as well. So it's one of the um, top universities just in the Sydney area. And um, Howie actually used to be Derek's tutor, believe it or not. So oh, wow. it was kind of funny how that, yeah, exactly. And it panned out how it did. And now, um, you know, Derek's the game lead for Guild of Guardians and how he is a game economist, of course. Um, so my crypto journey was probably started around 2017 to 2018. So I wasn't as deep into crypto as I am now um, at the time. Like, I guess it was still quite new to most of the world at that, at that time. And, um, you know, the bull market was going on, people were getting, you know, rich. And obviously, you know, being the person I was, uh, I was just like interested to see what was going on. And then I was there for the bear market. Um, thankfully, you know, I didn't have much money in it myself, so I didn't really get burned as some people unfortunately did. Mm -hmm. But um, it really, I was really drawn to the space because I found it, you know, I just found new technology very interesting, right? Like I was too young, for example, to be there for like the dot-com boom, the um, internet, you know, Facebook and MySpace. So to me, it was like a very new type of, um, you know, sector. So fast forward to probably... 2020, mid 2020, I didn't really touch crypto too much. It was always in the back of my mind, but I was never too deep. Um, so the the Bitcoin halving happened in the mid 2020. And that's when I started to get really deep into everything. Right. And I was like, you know what, um, you know, all these years ago, I wonder if it's going to happen again, right? So I started to dig my, um, you know, feet into um, the space again. And <clears throat> from there, I think it was probably around the end of 2020, and the start of 2021 when things really started to pick up. So, you know, Bitcoin, I think was around eight to nine K in mid 2020. And then, you know, start of the first quarter or the second quarter of 2021, it was like at like 40, 50 K, something mm -hmm. around there. So it was pretty surreal of what happened, especially after you consider the bear market, like lots of people, they just got absolutely um, destroyed. Yeah. So I wasn't um, always touching NFT gaming at that point in time. It was probably around march in 2021 where i started you know looking into axe infinity i'm like you know what i've till then i was focused on like the layer one platform so you know ethereum solana you know DeFi. that's that was kind of like the main themes that people were focused on at the time but nft games they weren't really that big so um i came across axie like how you know a lot of people they just come into the space and they you know discover axie that seems to be like right. a own story apparently right and um so, sorry, it's got a message. Close that real quick. And um, it was it was a very interesting concept at the time. But the thing with Axie is like, from a very early point, I don't know if you, you know, you, I know that you read some of my tweets sometimes. I'm very hard on sustainability and economy. So from a very early like point, I realized, you know, Axie's economy is not really going to be sustainable. Right. Like, it's really great to see people earning money and, you know, changing people's lives. And, you know, I'm not a cool person. Of course, I love seeing that. But unfortunately, in the day, some of these things aren't sustainable without an immersive game. So this right. is when, you know, I was like, you know, is there any other NFT games where it becomes very immersive? Um, oh, I should have turned off my notifications before I got here. Um, and then... <laughs> it's a popular man. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so I discovered Guild of Guardians through that. So... There's probably some other questions throughout this podcast where I could kind of expand on why I was drawn to Guild of Guardians. But right. basically since, yeah, mid-2021, um, I've just been very, very deep into the space since then. And that's pretty much 
um, my story. It's been, I mean, the space has been amazing, especially the last, you know, six months or so. It's really, 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 really boomed and expanded. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, amazing introduction. I love it. And uh, Kalia, uh, tell us about you, our friend. Uh, for those that don't know, again, like an uh, in introduction, I was saying uh, that is our uh, social media content and social media manager. Kalia, tell us about yourself, my friend. Let's uh, Let's hear about it. Hi, everybody. My name's Kalia. Yes, so I'm the content and social media manager for Gilded Guardians. I don't really know how I'm going to follow up after your introduction, <laughs> Ryan. Um, but yeah, look, I am, yeah, look, I've been in marketing for um, 10 years. I am pretty new to the uh, crypto and NFT space. Um, I guess I was introduced to the space in, well, most of the crypto space in 2019. Um, I worked for a startup in Berlin, Germany. Um, and yeah, I went into that role not knowing anything at all, um, but it was this tiny little startup that was, yeah, really, really amazing. Um, I learned so much and I was there for about a year or so. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, I guess I, I th through working um, at, the, at that startup, I found a, a whole new love for something I never even knew existed, which was pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, um, I didn't really know what NFTs were back then, th then either. Um, but I remember, uh, learning about crypto kitties for the first time in 2019. Um, so this is my, so I'm pretty brand new to the NFT space. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm learning every day. Um, there's obviously so much to learn, um, obviously with how fast paced it is. Um, and yeah, it's just super, super exciting. And I'm, yeah, super excited to be with Guild Guardians and also to be on this podcast. So Amazing. thank you so much for having me. No, thank you guys. I want to say thank you both so much for being here. Um, and I think, you know, it's funny you say that you're, you're new to the NFT space. I think a lot of you, I think it's like everybody, even us, like even though we, some of us might have been in it for a year or two years, whatever, we're all still very, very new to it. I mean, this is a whole new concept altogether in the grand scheme of things. I think we're still on the ground floor. And uh, great introductions, both of you. That was absolutely amazing. And then there's WT sitting over there with a the beautiful setup. Look at this. Uh, every time, every week, Hello. every week, it just gets better and better and better and better. Uh, looks awesome, buddy. How you doing? Look at that in the sweater. I, I, I still got like I don't even have one of those still, man. What's going on, WT? What's going on, baby? Not much, man. Good. Uh, yeah, that was Cadmus. I just got him in hand roughly almost 12 hours ago. Actually, I got off the line with Bruno. We had a, like an hour meeting, and then I jumped in my car, went and grabbed them all. Mm -hmm. I now have 10 in my hand, and the one that you've seen here. That's the number 10 Cadmus. And at the end of this uh, cast, I will let you know how you can win it. So oh. stick around and I'll let you know at the end on how you can win that number 10 Cadmus display piece. All right. Absolutely. So, yeah, amazing. Things are going good. I'm super pumped about this. Let's go. Yeah. WC's always giving back, man. I tell you, that's one man's always, always, always giving back to the community. Uh, I want to say again, thank you so much. This has been amazing. Uh, you already guys already know how much we love, you know, WT and I have for the, for the game and, and the, and the community, the Gilded Guardians community. I mean, we love it. We're always trying to pull for it and everything. And uh, it's really, 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 really good uh, to have you guys here and to put faces to the names. And uh, I, I'm like I said, I'm super, 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 super excited to talk to you guys today. Um, all right, right. I want to start with you, my friend. Um, you know, uh, I want to know because I know you know about NFTs. That's your that's like kind of your specialty and thing. I want to know what your thoughts of the the NFT gaming, like where we are today, like where NFT gaming is today, and where you see it in say like three to five years or so. Yeah, it's one of my favorite questions to always talk about with um, people. Um, very broad question. So I'd say that, okay, so if we kind of zoom out, I think if we look at the last year or two, or maybe not the last year or two, maybe the last six months, we've really seen NFTs, in particular the uh, profile pictures, for example. Mm -hmm. They, um, you know, they've got the bored apes and, uh, you know, they really kind of took, took off. And now, you know, you see celebrities, people on Twitter, you know, yep. Like a few years ago, like this would be like imagination. Um, but one thing that I feel like hasn't really taken off just yet is NFT gaming. Like, in fact, a lot of people, they're not even, they're not even aware that NFTs can be used in gaming. Like that's how early we are, right? right. And then <clears throat> the game that has really probably, um, you know, received a lot of attention is Axie Infinity. And of course, you know, I have the most um, utmost respect for the Axie Infinity team. I actually um, sometimes talk, engage with them on Twitter sometimes. And um but I feel like at the end of the day, they do have its issues. And that issue is that they don't have a sustainable economy. Mm -hmm. So, and the issue there is that Axie Infinity is not really a game where people play because, um, well, actually, if I 
a lot of people, they do enjoy playing Axie Infinity. There's, not, there's no doubt about that. But I think if we were trying to be honest with ourselves and try and see, will, this, will mainstream people come and adopt this? Probably not, without right. the earning potential. So when you take that earning potential away and the economy dies, so does the game with it. So to kind of combat this, we really need a, like immersive type of game in um, the NFT space. And there are you know games like us, Guild of Guardians, Alluvium, Big Time, Ember Sword. All of these are great titles, and um, I really hope if it's not even us, of course, that we we're trying to we want it to be us. But I feel like any game that kind of really breaks through that first type of wall that's going to really create like a huge flood into NFT gaming. So similar to how Axie Infinity kind of brought all this spotlight into the space, mm -hmm. the first mainstream game that's going to... Um... Oh, did we lose Ryan? Type of effect. Oh, there he is. thought we lost you there for a second. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. We thought we lost you there for a second. Oh, good. Did no, you, you're good. Um, hear everything else? Yeah, yeah, we heard you. We heard you. You're good. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's great. Um, yeah, so I think we're still kind of... Um, building obviously to that point where we can really break through but i'm very optimistic and i think in three to five years time we are going to see not one but multiple nft games um you know being played by people who may have even hated nfts to begin with because it's yeah. going to be so integrated and people are going to finally understand how it can enhance the player experience I I could I I completely completely agree with that. I think <clears throat> sorry, like you said with Axie Infinity, I think that's the one that everyone kind of knows and hears of to get into the space. Um, but you're right, and I think they're going to make the mistakes that a lot of people are going to be able to learn from to move ahead. And uh, and and absolutely, I think that was a really 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 great. Um, Great answer because I, I totally agree with that. It's like they're going to make the mistakes that other – and that's the disadvantage of kind of coming in being the big game first is that you're going to make those mistakes and everyone coming in now, we're going to be able to learn from it and kind of you know work off of that. Um, Kalia, I got to say – that was a great answer, by the way. I got to say, Kalia, uh, I love – so, you know, if guys, if you've been on Twitter or anything like that, you've noticed how amazing the engagement's been and how it's been increased lately. And it's been on fire. And that you're looking at the face right there. That is Kalia. That is the, the one that's literally pumping up. Uh, your tweets and, and all that stuff, doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. I have to say, I've noticed definitely an increase in in um, in uh, you know likes and retweets and all that stuff and all the all the content for Guild of Guardians. And I gotta say, thank you so much for doing, just being so amazing at it. Now, I want to know, do you have any prior experience of doing that stuff? Have you done this before, or uh, you know, any training, any prior work to doing this? Or okay, sorry, uh, I'm back. Sorry, I had a little miss miss a, a malfunction there. I want to know, do you have any prior experience or training? Or is this your first time doing uh, doing this? So I guess besides being entirely addicted to social media. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't, right? right? I think that comes first. I think that definitely helps me with this job. Mm -hmm. um, part of the job description was to live and breathe Twitter. And so that obviously comes quite easy to me because of the fact that I'm quite addicted to social media. Mm -hmm. um, but look, um, yeah, look, I, de I definitely have lots of experience um, in uh, the social media space. Um, in, in regards to um, content creation and community building and that kind of thing. Um, I Throughout my career, I've mostly specialised in content and social media. And even from like the very sort of beginning, uh, you know, when Instagram first became a thing, when Facebook and Twitter sort of first became a thing. So it's been interesting to sort of be, uh, I guess, in the content and social space for that amount of time to sort of see how it's evolved and how the, all the different algorithms have changed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, definitely have experience. Um, but I also just really love being on uh, Twitter all the time. So that's probably why you're always seeing um, all the likes and all the engagement. Um, it comes incredibly naturally to me. So, so yeah, um, yeah. So it's a bit of experience and also just being addicted and just just loving it. So. Yeah, I tell you the the Guild of Guardians crew and the community. I mean, we love we love talking about it. We love sharing our stuff, and you're right there to to push it too, which is amazing. It's always good to see that. So for sure, that's that's really awesome. Uh, you know, I, building off of that, I, I mean, you answered almost everything I was wondering. But like, <laughs> I'm a swing shift worker, and I'm up at various times of the day and night through different weeks, and I see you on all the time, <laughs> and I'm like scratching my head is like. Man, when I, I don't sleep when much, but sleep? you, you're taking like a whole new level. And I'm like, when does she sleep? So my first question is, are you a robot? And then my <laughs> second question is, if you're not a robot, and even if you are a robot, you can admit it. We'll, we'll be okay. We like robots here, except for the ones that scam us. But yeah, what is your process or do you have like a game plan when you get into this each day? Um... 
Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess the process, I guess the rough process for me is, you know, I definitely do have a sort of a content strategy, a rough content strategy. Um, when I first started, you know, I sort of had it all written down, sort of had it all sort of planned out. But I think that, you know, you can't always stick to like these sort of rigid content plans. But I do have like a general kind of, I guess, idea of what I'll be tweeting week to week, month to month. Um, but generally, I wouldn't say, I, yeah, I wouldn't say I follow a close, uh, I guess, a close process. I guess that um, it, it really is just about being online regularly and engaging with the right tweets, re- engaging with engaging with everyone. I, I want to engage with every single person that has taken the time to actually mention Gilded Guardians. I think that's super important. Um, and I think it really does a lot for the community as well. You know, when you are engaging with people's um, just mentions or, or, or full tweets or retweets, um, you know, because... I don't know, it just kind of really sort of humanizes a brand. Um, and, 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 and yeah, I mean, that's definitely what I was sort of brought on to do, uh, among a, a bunch of other things as well. Um, but, yeah, not necessarily uh, a process that I follow. It's, it's all pretty organic. I got to say, like, I get excited when I see, like, you know, Gilded Guardians likes the tweet. and You know, you get it's exciting, man, to see that, that you guys are, are behind us as well. We're behind the, the community and the community is behind the, the players as well and, and, uh, and the community as well. So I think that's, that's, that's really, really uh, very, very important. I think, you, honestly, I think you're doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. There's something I wanted to talk about, which I kind of I want to bring up uh, sooner than later. Uh, there was big, 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 big news today. Big, big, big yeah. news today with IMX. Massive news today. Um, so they raised two hundred million, right? It was two hundred million in funding, uh, which included names like Tencent. Ten is it Tencent? As I said, they are massive, massive, yeah. massive, 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 massive. I know who they are. Massive, massive, massive. Um, what does that mean? What does that mean for say like Gilded Guardians and stuff? Is that how does that tie in? Does this does this does Gilded Guardians tie into this at all? Yep. So, um, I guess, yeah, 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 no, of course. Um, so, yeah, so basically, we, also, we obviously have Immutable as the parent company, mm-hmm. and um, Guild of Guardians is owned and published by um, Immutable. So any funds that they get from raising something like a Series C, it'll always um, trickle down to Guild of Guardians. And um, yeah, we Guild of Guardians and Gods Unchained, we obviously two of the games that uh, Immutable is actually creating mm-hmm. in-house. So part of the studio aspect of Immutable. So we definitely are going to be getting um, funds, just like how we did from the Series V raise. And um, in terms of what it actually means for the space, I think it's you know probably one of the biggest news announcements in the game fire history so far. Because honestly, uh, so Tencent they um, own Riot Games, so that's League of Legends, Valorant, right. um, Team Fight Tactics, like as well as many other things that um, they own, right? So really legitimizes the space where before people like, you know, cryptos are scamming Mm -hmm. people. But then when you have partnerships like GameStop as well from a few weeks ago, and then when you have Tencent coming on, as well as a 200 million US dollar, um, you know, funding Series C, it's um, really makes the people from mainstream in particular really take a double look at crypto and what's going on here. Right. I feel like I agree. I feel like it brings legitimacy to it, uh, really puts that, you know, like I always say, it, it puts weight behind anything. If these people support it, these people are involved, then it, it gives it credibility. I think it's amazing. And actually, speaking of Tencent, uh, they own Riot Games, which uh, G, Justin Hulock, is that how you say his name? I'm not sure how to say uh, who just uh, who just joined IMX, uh, and he originally came from – who came from them, right? He came from Tencent or Riot Games, but he just joined as yeah, well, Riot, yeah. which is huge because he's uh, he wants to get on the esports side of things or something like that, or he was, he's been involved with it. That's huge. These names, and, and like you said, with – um, uh, GameStop coming in and stuff. These, this is massive. These are massive names, massive announcements, mag- massive uh, companies getting involved. And, and I think the future is just, it's going to be amazing. My mind is blown uh, right now. So I definitely wanted to talk about that before we got too far out of it and too far away. Um, and right now, I also want to say, uh, you're also very big into the Discord. Very, very engaging in the Discord. We talk all the time in the Discord. Um, uh, what are some other things that you're working on uh, that says the community doesn't know about? Like what are other things you do uh, within the community that we wouldn't be aware of? Oh, so Bruno's trying to get leaks, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Uh, um, I mean, we, never, never, we would never do that. <laughs> never. <laughs> no, that's a very good question. Um, obviously, um, everything we do, honestly, there's so much under the surface that the community never sees. And I get when people get frustrated because, you know, not much announcements are being made 
or maybe there's nothing going on and people tend to be frustrated, especially when you're in like a, you know, bear market, let's just call it, or like right. at least a downtrending market where, you know, people are talking about their token price, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I completely get why people uh, might want to know what we're always doing. And um, it's a great question. So I think similar to what Kalia was talking about earlier about the rigid structure, we're in such a dynamic and fast moving environment and what we're doing that sometimes you have a rigid structure, but so much of what your daily tasks or weekly tasks are, it's always dynamic and changing. So I think the ones that's ongoing right now is I'm um, trying to revamp the um, ambassador program. So mm -hmm. you guys may have seen the Reddit post. I, I think you guys were talking about in the podcast yep. the other day. Um, so we're testing these things out. We're trying to get a Reddit army. We're trying to get a Twitter tribe up and going. And these things, I feel like you can't just, I can't just open up like a hiring screen and be like, hey, 100, 200 people come in and join. Because it's just, there's no foundation. Mm -hmm. When people join, there needs to be like some sort of strategy and some sort of leadership inside these programs. So I think that's what we're doing, you know, behind the scenes. Um, another example of this would be like the recent delay we had. Um, you know, it's a very sensitive topic when um, people's emotions at play, the money. So we kind of, we have to really dive into it internally and work out what's our communication strategy going to be like, like which questions do we want to answer, how are we going to answer it, things like this, of trying to be as transparent as possible as a community. Right. And then, you know, just general admin tasks, for example, like um, recent Sandbox event that Tomahawk, big shout out to him, and his um, o Canada A server, um, you know, that which when we try to put these events, community events together, we also have to be mindful of the timeline. So we also have the pre-alpha registrations come out recently. And then I had to really line the two and two together because like i don't want to like announce sandbox event and then we drop pre-alpha the next right. like, on the same same day or the next day like it takes over the fire but then internally our dates also move so it's always like an ongoing process and then actually making sure the whole structure of everything in the event is um all, all good and um yeah that's pretty well much. that's you know we we've talked about this too it's like you know the, the game there's a lot, it's a long process and you can't always have hype going all the time. Everything can't just always be on fire going up. You're going to have moments where it's going to be, you know, there's going to be like flat areas. That's just, that's the nature of the beast. You can't have it just like, okay, here's this, here's this, here's this. There's, you got to have time to build the product and, and build the brand and build the community and stuff. So yeah, like you said, it's great. You can't have things overlapping like the, the first of all, big shout out to Tomahawk, uh, doing the, um, the GOG event. I was a uh, part of that as well. I opened it up. They did the opening night. That was a lot of fun, a lot of hype, a lot of fire. It was great. Community all came in. Great stream. Yeah, it was it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. So I I have a lot of I have a lot of fun getting to know the community too. And 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 uh, and I agree that you got to you got to stagger things out. You can't just throw everything at them one week and then it's like, wow, this is awesome. We're getting all this cool stuff and like you know everything's happening. And then you have you know four months of just nothing. You can't really do that. So yeah, you got to spread that stuff out for sure. Uh, great answer. You're a great speaker. You know, Ryan Ryan's a good speaker, man. You know, he's, uh, he's good. Uh, Kelly, I'm going to throw the same question to you. I know you're, you're very, very busy. with. So I don't know. Listen, I'll tell you. I don't know how you do it, too, because, listen, it's 1 o'clock in the morning for me. So, you know, because of time zones and stuff, I don't, I don't sleep much either. I'm in the same boat as you. So, yeah, same thing. I know you're very, very busy with the social media stuff. But it's like, is there anything else? you? Because, I mean, I don't know how you would do anything else, to be honest with you, because you're always pushing the social media and doing such a good job with it. But is there anything else you do behind the scenes that we don't see, that we would see? She definitely does. Yeah. Get away, Kelly, huh? Let them know. Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah, I mean, look, um, Twitter is always open on my uh, desktop. It's always open on my phone. So that's always something that's happening kind of in the background. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always working on um, other projects as well. I think uh, probably the most notable project that I've been working on lately that's been taking up a lot of my time um, is obviously the pre-alpha demo. So mm -hmm. yeah, just the, the whole process of, um, you know, the initial planning of how, of how that's going to roll out. Um, uh, as well as, I guess, the, the actual process as to how it will actually run um, from the recruitment um, to, you know, who we're actually choosing to um, join the pre-alpha demo um, to, yeah, like comms. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've been spending a lot of time um, doing that at the moment. Um, even, even things like, you know, uh, getting the landing page built and ensuring that it works properly, doing all the testing um, and working with our engineers to, um, to get that done. Um, but yeah, at the moment, that's an ongoing process, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, but yeah, really excited that, 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 you know, we, we got the application page live and, um, that's all sort of happening smoothly now. Um, so I'm able to, I guess, work on the other stuff in the background as well. Um, just see, um, the other comms, um, that are involved in pre-alpha demo. 
But um, yeah, that will be an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. I guess another um, project that I've been working on um, a little bit lately, well, I guess I've been working on it sort of like from the start, um, we sort of like, I guess, chip away at it slowly. Um, we are looking to um, set up a proper, proper referral program. Um, oh, nice. as well as a kind of like a, uh, an influential referral program as well. Um, that's something that, um, is definitely in the works. Um, but I am, yeah, chipping away at that every day. Um, and yeah, setting up the mechanics for that. Um, also working really closely with Ryan. Ryan and I work really, really closely together, um, just in regards to the, our comms and the different content that we create. And I think there will be, uh, quite a crossover, um, with, you know, our, perhaps our ambassador program uh, for the referral program that we're setting up. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I guess you will hear more about that in the coming weeks. Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I guess like somewhat recently, well, not somewhat recently, um, you guys actually participated in the market research survey. So thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that WT, you loved it. Um, yeah. So thank you for the tweet. <laughs> that was crazy. That was like the first time, like I actually enjoyed, usually I'm annoyed and I'm just like clicking just to click like get it done and over but like i was actually taking my time and like actually think about it like so whoever put that together that was fantastic if it was you kudos to you uh and something i wanted to ask you uh ryan was talking about the uh the the reddit army and the twitter tribe uh you know I know, I know that push was made recently and Baird's involved with that. Is it, do you, uh, Kalia, do you have any plans to expand G, uh, Guild of Guardians into social media channels such as like uh, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, or maybe some other ones that we aren't thinking of right now? Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, we are thinking about um, Instagram and TikTok for sure. I think that, um, you know, um, the, the content that we post across um, Twitter will be probably quite a bit different to the content that we post across TikTok and Instagram. Um, obviously, you know, TikTok and Instagram are a very sort of visual, um, a very visual platforms. And I think that, you know, we are, you know, at the moment we're sort of writing up the strategies and, and how we're actually going to, um, uh, I guess, like move over to those channels, not necessarily move over, but expand over to those channels. So, you know, that those audiences are obviously uh, really quite different from, you know, a lot of the audiences that we find on Twitter and as well as Discord. So, you know, that's obviously going to be more of your sort of mainstream audience. Um, so yeah, we're currently kind of writing the plans for that now, but I do see that happening. Um, not not soon, but um, in the in the in the near future. Um, yeah, like I said, it's it's very much. I think it will really really sort of help with our um, mainstream adoption of um, well that, the adoption of that audience. So right. so yeah, that's going to be really really exciting. Um, so um, my TikTok skills aren't great. I'm not down with the kids, unfortunately. <laughs> but you know, I'm sure we can um, find some really great people to help us make that content. Um, and and as well as Instagram. Um, but yeah, I think it will be a really a really it will be a step in the right direction for us to be able to you know uh, really bring on those um bring on that mainstream audience so yeah and i think there'll be lots of other channels as well that we'll be looking into i mean um you know we have a youtube channel obviously but we don't really utilize it that much so right. they'll you know, we, you know we want to think about channels like that like what channels can we really utilize and you know build a presence we want to build a presence obviously across as many platforms as we possibly can um so yeah that's slowly in the works but i'm really excited for that um and i think as well you know Obviously, with um, you know this new um, injection of capital, you know we're going to be able to hire some really awesome people to help with that as well. Um, so yeah, we're um, I think that's really exciting. I'm really excited about that. I um, I do love like the <laughs> yeah. I mean, tic awesome. TikTok TikTok is is huge. I mean, I'm I'm like you. I'm not, I'm you know the TikTok thing is not really my thing, but yeah, it's massive. I mean, it's 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 taken over for sure. But I'm not, I'm not a good dancer. You know what I mean? That's the thing is I'm just not a good dancer. You know, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta you know, it's not one of my strengths. That's that's uh, let's just say that. Uh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, WT. I didn't mean to cut you out there, buddy. No, yeah. that's fine. Uh, you know, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask Ryan earlier. Uh, uh, Capone asked you uh, about the the NFT gaming space. What you thought about it? And mm. I was kind of thinking, um, you know, in that in that space, where and, and I don't know. I know it's a broad question, so I apologize, but. In that space, where do you think GOG Guild of Guardians is in that space compared to all the other games? What what gives them the competitive advantage to set themselves apart from the other games in the NFT space along that timeline? Do you think? Okay, yeah, that's a really great question. Um, no, it's broad. 
Oh, no, it's fine. So I think number one, what I'd say is that really caught my eye about Guild of Guardians is the fact that it's a mobile-based RPG, fantasy squad-based RPG, right? And there's not many games at all. Like, And it's a dungeon crawler as well. So you think of games like Diablo, like people, mm-hmm. people love that. And um, I think a lot of the bigger games that we tend to see in this space, it's like they're on PC, and there's not really many mobile variants going around. Um, so I think that's number one. And number two is the accessibility of a mobile phone. So a lot of people, they um, they don't have access to a PC. Maybe they can't afford it due to their um, socioeconomic status, or they're just maybe not PC competitive gamers, right? Some people just enjoy playing on the phone at work, on the way to work, on, to, on the way to school. So it really opens up the um, total addressable market for GOG much, much broader. Number two is, I think people need to realize it's not easy to make a game, especially, you know, all the talent, all the marketing, everything you have to pay for, it costs a lot of money. So I think a big thing is since we are part of Immutable, that funding that we do have, it really helps us take us to the next level because we have the, um, you know, we have the opportunity to hire people from Riot. We have the opportunity to um, go out and find the best talent. We have the opportunity to um, outsource anything we need. So I think that's something really understated in the space. Like, Indie games like Action Infinity, they obviously did very well. But I think if you really want to hit that mainstream adoption, you're going to need the funds to back it up. And to raise these funds, it's not exactly the easiest job. But um, yeah, so I think that's probably the main thing that GOG has an advantage over other NFT games in this space. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I mean, that, like I said, when, the, when you hear $200 million and, and these different companies coming in, that just it just it puts weight behind everything and i think it's very 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 important uh now i got some questions for the two guys i know we kind of touched over a little bit but what got you into crypto like why you know because here's the thing you know i I, i'm you know i'm I'm a little older i'm a little older you know and there's people you know in my age demographic that i'll be talking they're like what what do you mean you get you can you can make money while you're playing games or you can play to earn or they have no idea they just don't have an idea they just don't see it they don't understand it they don't know about it so i find myself constantly explaining it to people and uh and they think it's a great concept you know so uh like what got you what got you into into it in the first place did you like the concept uh did you like the the fact that it was you know you can earn or whatever you want to call it you know play and earn or whatever it is what got you guys into it i'll ask both you guys yeah, I mean, I'll start. Um, I guess, I mean, obviously, you know, look, when I when I got that job in Berlin, um, that was my first introduction to it. I guess what really sort of, I guess, attracted me to it was the fact that, I mean, I see this as a, I see crypto, generally speaking, NFTs, generally speaking, as a huge disruptor across so many different industries. Yeah. Um, and I've always loved tech that disrupts, things that shake up, you know, um, conventional structures and, and things like that. Um, I was I, I worked um, for a startup bank in London um, in the fintech space, and I guess that was my sort of introduction to a, a disrupting kind of technology. Um, so um, you know, obviously, when I moved over to um, the blockchain startup that I was working for, um, that was kind of I guess I kind of had that new sort of found fashion a passion. Um, so yeah, for me, it's it's mostly about that. The, the 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 disruption that um the possibilities or and the and the dis- disruption that it allows for um and then beyond that I mean obviously I'm learning every single day NFTs I mean it's a it's a pretty amazingly fun space to be able to work on something like Guild of Guardians like I mean I get up every morning and I'm just really super excited to be doing my job like and and yeah you you know you're learning new things every day it is super fun the community is amazing um and I think that obviously goes hand in hand with why I've continued to, I guess, stay in the space and, um, and yeah, and, um, even just joining the space. I agree. And, and one of my, one of my favorite things I, I've talked about this before, it's like, there's an old clip from, uh, David Letterman when he's talking to Bill Gates on his, on his show one time. And I, I show this on my stream all the time. I talk about it all the time where Bill Gates is trying to explain the internet to, uh, to, uh, David Letterman yeah. and David Letterman's like, Oh, okay. And he's like making fun of it. And it's just like, you know, it's if, when people don't understand, uh, it, like I always say, technology or whatever is going to go ahead with or without you. And, you know, either you keep up or get left behind. That's what I always say. And it's just funny when you look back and now everyone uses it. Like we're using it right now just to have this conversation. And it's just like a necessity in a day-to-day conversation. So I feel like, you know, you fast forward. I mean, it could be 10, 20 years, whatever it is. I just feel like everybody's going to be going this route. And this is going to be just a normal thing. And people are going to look back and say, remember when people were, you know, they didn't believe in it or whatever. I, I feel, I truly believe that. What about you? Uh, what about you, Ryan? What, is, what about you? What got you in it as well? I mean, just to touch on that last point, I completely agree. Like about the um, whole internet 
thing when it was just starting people see it as a fad mm -hmm. the thing was nfts and crypto there is, there's a bit of a challenge where um it's a bit intimidating to enter the space because you know there's wallets there's sending it to addresses there's all these different change chains and people are just like yo what the hell am i meant to do right mm -hmm. but i think you know like exactly how you're saying in 10 20 years i don't know how long it'll take but i am very you know i have a very killer conviction that people are going to start interacting with cryptocurrencies and nfts and the blockchain without even knowing it so recently robbie ferguson actually the the um you know one of the founders of immutable he said that i can't, I can't remember the quote exactly but he said basically people are going to be um engaging with these um you know marketplaces these nfts without even realizing that they are so that's how it's going to shape up in the future to go back to why i kind of you know got interested in nfts i'm not going to lie like just like anyone who's haven't had had hasn't had any sort of exposure to the space they um they like wow the you know bitcoin's going really up today ethereum's going really up like let me go invest into it and look um i'm not going to you know i'm not ashamed to say that that's why i was interested at the start or at least that's what sparked my curiosity and then i started to realize why people actually cared about it and that's you know decentralized finance um bitcoin as the alternative to gold due to like you know hedging against inflation i won't get into that but basically <laughs> there wasn't any like meaning too much meaning behind it before besides like you know how can i make the most maximum return right. so i think when nft games come in this is the biggest shift into what's happening is because it becomes a culture and the reason why it becomes a culture is because communities can build around games communities are not going to be built around you know a DeFi protocol or mm -hmm. bitcoin well they well they can but they're normally the cults right um so i think that's what nft is and NFT gaming really brings like this whole community side to it. And with communities, you know, we're humans at the end of the day. We love talking to people. We love interacting with one another, creating things, having fun. You can't really do this with something like a Solana Discord server. Like people are not going to really like connect in the same way, right? Right, right, right. So I think that's what really. So that's the, that's originally what got me into the space, the whole actual investment side and everything. But I think what's really making me really passionate about the space is actually revolutionizing how gamers experiences are for the you know foreseeable future and just these communities that um transpire out of what we're doing oh yeah like i even simple things like you're saying how i think you know uh, you're saying people are going to start doing without realizing like even look at uh ticket sales now it's nfts and you know the super bowl tickets for nfts like so many things now are, are starting to slowly kind of turn into that into nfts and you know gaming side is going to turn into it and next thing you know it's just going to be a complete transition i believe it's just uh i mean what do i know but that's i truly truly believe that uh wt you have any questions you have another you have some questions yeah uh he was I, I gotta ask this. I've been holding on to this question for like, let's see, it's March. So I've been holding on to this question for like maybe three months now. <laughs> so IMX uh, had a Christmas party back in December and there was like no details, no pictures, nothing. And I was like, oh man, that would have been a perfect opportunity. So this is a two-part question because you, you were mentioning uh, the, the Ferguson brothers. So that, that sparked my interest here. Um, were you guys able to go to the Christmas party? And if you did, uh how was it was it was there dancing was there like a a celebratory speech toast or you know any, any cool thing that happened there was the food good what was it like if you were able to be there so i didn't personally go to this one but i think kalia may have but i'll let her confirm that okay i did so i mean i had been with immutable for i think two weeks and um i live in mm -hmm. melbourne um, but yeah, we, um, it was, it was on the Sydney Harbor. Um, well, first we started in the office. So, um, this beautiful office space in, um, uh, Sydney on King, uh, on King street and the office is just super cool. Um, really, really, it's like two, two levels. It's really beautiful. Um, loads of amazing food. Um, there was a nice bar there. Um, and it was the first time I'd met everybody. Um, so that was, that was awesome. Um, I did meet the Ferguson brothers. Um, they are so cool. Actually, they are just really down to earth guys. Like you wouldn't think that they, you know, that they were, you know, um, in the C-suite because of just how incredibly down to earth they are. So yeah. Um, yeah, I had a really good chat with them. They're really lovely. Um, and yeah, um, but yeah, we started in the office. There was, yeah, loads of really good food. We played some games. Um, and then we actually went to, uh, we, we got on a boat in the Sydney Harbour and it was beautiful. Um, there were two boats actually. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun, lots of dancing, lots of, lots of drinks, um, <laughs> lots of oysters. I love oysters. So there was just oysters everywhere. Um, 
but yeah, it was, um, it was a really fun day and night. It just, I feel like it went on forever. Um, and I, I, w- I wasn't well the next day. I can say that. <laughs> I was going to say you had me at bar. I would have been, uh, I just parked myself in front of the bar and then it's, uh, and that's it. But don't worry, Ryan, my, my invite was lost in the mail too. I mean, you know, yeah, my, it was mine too. I was looking every day. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I didn't start at immutable. Yeah. So that's that's why I didn't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I mean, they just they just forgot my invite. I guess. I mean, next year, next year, next year. So I I guess other than other than watching, you know, this is probably your favorite thing to do is watch, you know, mine and WT's podcast. One of your favorite things to do, obviously. Uh, But other than that, uh, I want to know what are some of your hobbies you do outside of this stuff, like you know without nfts and and social media and stuff like what are some of the things you like doing on your day-to-day life like something that you'd like to do if it's hiking fishing boxing i don't know what are you into do like uh cage fighting i don't know what do you guys do <laughs> yeah so um um I just, the nft space just consumed my life so much you just made me do a double think i'm like wait what do i do outside of um, <laughs> yeah is there is there an outside of this i mean <laughs> um, honestly, I'm a pretty simple guy. Like I'm not someone who uh, likes to do extravagant things like, on a daily, often basis. So I really honestly like going to like simple walks at the park, um, you know, reading in my downtime, generally they're educational, unfortunately, but, um, I do like reading like, um, fiction, fictional type of stuff as well. Um, and you're just like, I'm like any other person really at the end of the day, like, you know, watching TV shows, movies, um, just hanging out with friends, family, um, you know, going out for dinner. So nothing, honestly, there's nothing too much going on in that side of my life right now, since I'm just so consumed in this whole NFT space. I feel like obviously maybe, you know, five, 10 years down the line when everything settles down, Mm -hmm. I get to see if the vision of NFT game, NFT gaming really took off. That's what's going to really make me feel satisfied. You're like part of this revolution. And then you are in something where people, um, the whole world doubted, but ended up going through Right. Um, so that's something that I'm really, I'm really passionate about. So I feel like um, right now that's kind of what's consuming my life, and I, I enjoy it. Right. So um, other than that, I'm just doing keeping it pretty simple for now. So it's yeah. safe to say no cage fighting. <laughs> no, we can <laughs> next year. Set it next year, right? Maybe we could do it at the mutable party or something. Yeah, well, next Christmas party. Next Christmas party. Well, hopefully we get the invite there. Yeah, that's all. Thanks first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. What about you, Kelly? What's your, let's see, a day to day. And I agree. Like, listen, I feel you on the, and it's consumed you. I mean, I'm in the same boat, you know, I trust mm-hmm. me. I trust me. Uh, but yeah, what about you? What is something you do in, in your day to day? If it's not to do with, you say, Guild of Guardians or uh, yeah. Web3 stuff. Yeah. So do you know what? I mean, I mean, we've just, we've obviously just come out of a pandemic and we still kind of, right. we still kind of mm-hmm. are in a pandemic. Um, so I feel like I forget what I, no, no I don't, I do remember <laughs> what I just said, but I feel like, you know, um, my life, I think my, my life changed a lot because of the pandemic. I was, I mean, I used to travel all the time. Um, I used to do lots of different things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about a lot of different things, a lot of, um, a lot of social causes. Um, um, something that I am super passionate about is, um, ethical fashion and vintage clothing. So probably not the right audience for this, but you know, hey, um, I'm all yours. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, yeah, so I started, I have like a, um, an online, uh, vintage e-commerce site and it, uh, I guess it initially started as like a, just a blog that I used to write. Um, and then, yeah, it turned it into a, um, uh, an e-commerce store, um, over yeah during the pandemic actually. So that's something that, um, I do in, in my spare time. Um, I really, yeah, I really love it. Uh, obviously very different to, um, NFT gaming and whatnot, <laughs> but um, yeah, otherwise like normal kind of stuff. I love going out with friends, trying new bars, trying new restaurants. Um, um, when I can, I love to go scuba diving. Um, when there's snow, not in Australia though. Um, I, you know, I love, I love snowboarding. Um, but yeah, they're just kind of like a, a few different things, but I haven't, haven't been diving in a while. I haven't been snowboarding in a while because We've been inside for a long time, especially in Melbourne. Diving is one of those things I've always wanted to do. I never, I never, I've never gone. I've never gone, you know, deep sea, uh, you know, scuba diving like that. I've always wanted to do that. Something on my list for sure. Yeah, you gave me. uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go go ahead, WT. Sorry. No, she gave me uh, with her vintage clothing uh, reference there. uh, We got a new person. I'm not going to bring up a whole lot, but Caitlin, she was in the Vogue magazine. So Mm. I'm I'm just suggesting it. 
you two get together. There's this company called Artifact. I'm sure you heard of them. They are yeah. huge into fashion and NFTs. Mm. Let's get a GOG Artifact collab going. There you go. I'm just saying, <laughs> hey, you, you sparked my mind and I'm thinking about how vintage clothing, she's in Vogue magazine. It's a winner, right? There you go. I love that. Okay, I would be totally down for that. And also, I'm going to convince her to come on the podcast for you guys. Awesome. I think she'd be super keen to do it. She's awesome. I think you'll love her. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, she probably. What's up, oh, man? It hurts when there's four people on the podcast. No, go for it. No, no, you're good. Trust me, dude. You're good. You're good. I was gonna. I was gonna say. Um, well, what I was gonna say. Yeah, I was gonna say. Caitlin's just probably watching this as we're talking about it and then she's just loving the idea because when i first introduced her to the discord she um she loved the community she was she felt very welcomed and she was like you know this is a highlight of my week or day let's just say it's a highlight of yeah. Our, yeah, immutable, awesome. to say that <laughs> and um she loved it so you know big shout out to you know people like yourself people in the community who just make us feel so inspired yeah. to do what we do and um yeah cool. that, we honestly means the world to us so thank you oh, like thank you like honestly yeah. thank you guys man you guys are in, in superstars like absolute superstars and uh like i say i just i feel like we've we've built a bond you know even though like this is the first time i'm actually seeing you guys you know face to face i mean i'm gonna call it face to face but video to video but uh, you know we build a bond we, we talk to each other we say what you know and it's just uh, it's a community it's built a community and and if you know i know you guys have watched the podcast before i'm very 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 big on that uh to me it's always been about community everything that i ever do it's it, it has to come down to the community if the community's there i'm there you know what i mean so so, um, yeah, I, I, I love, I love the GOG community, everything that's been going on with it. And, and you guys have been a massive part of it. Just, uh, really, really pulling like your weight, you know, and, uh, and you guys are superstars. I got to say it. You're superstars, man. Superstars. Um, I want to say what part of, uh, okay. One thing I want to ask, what part of the Guild of Guardians package makes you the most confident? What's the, what's the one thing, not, not the one, but what's the, what's, what, what part of the Guild of Guardians package makes you the most confidence, confident in the product? Uh, let's go with uh, Callie. Let's go. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> I mean, look, I think the community community is king. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and like you were just saying before, I feel like it's super important for any for any product to have an amazing community. And there are so many different brands and games that just don't get it right. Um, mm -hmm. And I will say, I guess, just from my you know short stint um, working in uh, blockchain previously. The community there was very, very different to this community. When I, um, you know, when I when I started uh, working for Guild of Guardians, I was I was super nervous about, you know, like um, coming into the community and you know talking to people. And it's sort of taken me a bit of time to, you know, sort of get in there and start talking to people and stuff. And um, but obviously, when I when I uh, you know uh, came into the community. Uh, I realized just it was a completely it's just completely different from any other community I personally experienced. So I feel like the, uh, you know commu community is king always, and I feel like this is this is a very special and very unique community, and I do think that this is what gives um, Guild of Guardians uh, well one of the reasons why it, it has such huge potential. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Ryan, let's yeah, hear it. That was a fantastic. Very good. Answer. She's a very good. I tell you, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. She, very good. I think that's it. Very good speaker. Very, very, very good. I like it. Very good answer. What about you, Ryan? Let's hear it. So, um, you know, of course, I'd like you know plus one what she exactly said. I'm not gonna to change it up. I'm gonna kind of give you a slightly different answer, of course. Um, so I'd say the team, um, not only the internal GOG team, like they're absolutely amazing. Everything they've achieved so far. You know, I, I don't want to name everyone because there'll be too many to name, <laughs> but the exact core team, they've, they've achieved um, so much. So I think it's also the Immutable itself. We're obviously like a part of Immutable and people don't really see that we actually talk to the IMX team, the Gods Unchained team, like quite, a, quite often actually. So, but the community don't exactly see that. So Immutable itself, if they grow, we grow. So, um, you know, the hires that they're bringing in, um, you know, Justin from Riot, Veronica um, as well from, she used to be the uh, head of digital marketing, I think from Alluvium, and she recently joined us as well. So nice. she's the head of marketing at Studio, if I remember correctly. And um, so these, the ambitions from Immutable to like actually try and get these big hires in, trying to get mm -hmm. these, um, you know, like 10 cent, getting all these funds in, that's what's making me really confident because we're not only having the vision that I think is the right way to be successful in that space, but we also have the team and the funds behind it to back it up. Yeah, that's I that also. Yeah, very very important. Like I say, I, I when I, when I, every time there's a, an immutable X like uh, announcement or it's just it's always big. Like it's just it's always something big, and and they're they're crushing it. They're crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Uh, WT, 
What you got, baby? Uh, well, uh, we're, we're kind of getting towards the end of it, and I'm going to let Bruno ask the final question because we've got to ask the final question. But first off, first off, special shout out to Guardian of the Week, Step Fam. The guy's a grinder. He's been here since day one on March the 3rd, the Discord birthday. I love the guy. He's, he's my bro, and I, I just love him. I love his passion and everything. So special shout out to him for Guardian of the Week. Also, mm -hmm. happy International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. We did not plan this. This just happened <laughs> just like this. There was no plan for this. I mean, we've been going back and forth for probably, uh, Ryan and I have been going back for months trying to set this up. In the last couple of weeks, we, and this just happened. So it's good karma. This was supposed to happen. That's how I feel. Yes. So sure. my last question to both of you, it can be a quick, easy answer. This is very broad. I apologize, but this is not financial advice. This is not medical advice. This is not even mechanical advice <laughs> what is the timeline you think before guild of guardians hits just 1 million users just a guess we just want to hear what your guess is ryan is this is this from the like um what launch you were talking about like full launch or like public yeah full launch um, once once we hit full launch when when do you think we'll hit a million users what's your best guess this is just lottery guess just for fun <laughs> lottery guess i think I'd say, oh, I don't really want to put the, put the team under the pump here, but you know, this is like well, I said, you might be you actually say it. Because <laughs> my opinion isn't affiliated with you know Guild of Guardians team or anything like that. Let's, let's get people <laughs> quoting me down the lines like, oh, Ryan said this many times. <laughs> no, no. We we get the drift. I honestly think though, the biggest thing that I mentioned before is that we're a mobile game. So when you're in the mm -hmm. app store, I think people might underestimate how many downloads you can actually get and they might um underestimate the amount of exposure you get especially by the time we get full launch so 1 million downloads i think 1 million downloads i'd say is um probably within the first two weeks i'd say that's nice my guess. <laughs> whoa well here's the thing whoa. here's the thing because my kid i got i got a couple kids right and Every game they play, there's ads. There's always ads, you know? And it's like every time an ad comes up, they're like, they want me to – I mean, obviously, the, this is a little bit different. They're not for kids. But they want me to download every 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 ad that comes up. Can you download this for me? Can you download this for me? So, I mean, I could see I could see it. I could see it hitting uh, a million early on. Uh, I could see it. I could see it. Just to clarify that before, you know, I you know get thrown into the boot or something, it's – um. I also based it off of another game called Fade in Arena. Um, I know mm -hmm. people are kind of iffy about the statistics and everything they bring up, but – um, I know that they got like many millions of downloads within the first 24 hours in the first week. So right. that's part of my estimate was part of that. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind as well. This is what, just, this is just wild speculation. There's, yeah, there's yeah, no, I mean, no one's, no one's holding you to this. Yeah. Okay, I, what do you think? I think it's best I just not say anything. Oh. <laughs> see, see, Ryan, she, she made you see, she's like, listen, I don't know what you're talking about. Man. Oh, shoot. Leave me just hang out the dry, Ryan. <laughs> she says, I have no idea. I don't even understand the question. She said, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I think that, yeah. I mean, with what you said, Ryan, what, what you're basing it on. Yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely, it could be possible for sure, but obviously don't quote me. Um, yeah. we just have to wait and see. Yeah. I mean, obviously these are just speculations. It's not like, you know, and actually that's one thing I want to ask too. It's like, here's the thing, right? Uh, sometimes, you know, there's little, you guys put a little leak or a little information and the community will take it and like, blow it up into being like something and it's like i'm sure sometimes you guys are like oh you're sweating like whoa 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 because people's imaginations run wild okay and you guys some i mean i'm sure you guys sometimes worry about that it's like whoa like this little bit and it gets blown up to this big like totally off the track totally off the rails and sometimes you guys are probably sweating going whoa guys relax 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 it's not you know it's not that deep it's not that that big you know and i'm sure it happens i'm sure it happens because it's you know, it's it's people's imagination start running wild, and I, I'm guilty too. And I mean, WT was talking about a Super Bowl ad, like, you know, I had to reel yeah, him in a little not, bit. I am not part of that problem at all. Yeah, yeah, I had to reel him in a little bit on that one. He said Super Bowl. I said, whoa, whoa, <laughs> like, whoa. I'm racist, sorry. I <laughs> uh, no, but but yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it's it's a you know, and and I, and I understand it's like you know people's imagination start running, and it's like oh, it's got to mean this, it's got to mean that, and. And uh, I'm sure you guys are just sitting in the background going, whoa, what did we do or something? You know what I mean? It, you know, it happens. But uh, yeah. do you guys usually get nervous when you see that stuff, when you see the, the, the community kind of running wild on that stuff? Does it kind of make you guys nervous, sweat, or are you just kind of like, eh, let them, let them uh, assume kind of thing? Like, it's, you know, there's no harm. Yeah, I mean, 
times, but from from our history, I feel like it's always worked out in the end. It's always worked out well. Um, but it's also very, it's also awesome to like hear everyone's speculations and um, theories. So yeah, I mean, obviously we just want to, I mean, we want to keep the community happy, as happy as possible. Um, so yeah, sometimes get nervous, sometimes not. I think that, yeah. What do you think, Ryan? I think something to, I think something important to know in the crypto space is that people's memories are very short so in the oh, sense yeah. that, it's very hype and bust type of cycle. So, you know, some, you know, let's say with delay, for example, people are very down and then fast forward with pre-alpha registrations. And then we had this massive immutable um, announcement. So people's sentiment in terms of what their, like what their vision on the actual fundamentals behind a project really can shift just like that. Yep. If the, like the market's down right now, for example, if we have like a 10% overnight, boom, what do you see? People are very emotional in this space. So I think yes. if you really want to, um, you know, be, a builder in this space you need to have the long-term vision and you can't let li little um, like short-term movements or short-term sentiment um affect you of course that being said we did take the time to make an ama we were transparent so we do consider it important but i don't think we get nervous in the sense that um you know we're worried about it because we are very confident in like the team that we're building the game that we're building and um, just to go back to the original point about the um, amount of players, the fun speculation, um, I honestly don't feel like if we had like 500,000 players or like 5 million, to me, I don't think it's an issue because even after full launch, we're always going to be looking at how can we improve the game? How can we build it? Right. It's not going to like whatever amount of users we get, um, it's not going to like make us, you know, be like, oh, we're going to abandon the project or, you know, we're going to be down and slumped. We're going to be like, okay, how do we keep on building? How do we keep on improving? So That's I awesome. wanted to also double touch on, yeah. So I also want to double touch on that because, you know, I know people, hopefully people are going to be like, oh, Ryan said a million. No. I, I know you guys, we, I know we beat in this topic to yeah. death, but you know how the community can be like yeah. sometimes where they, it's, they take the very little tiny chunk. It's a very, it's, <laughs> it's just a, 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 you know, a speculation. There's nothing in set in stone. There's no, yeah, there's right. nothing like that. It's, it's just, just, we're just talking. We're just, just a couple of buddies talking, yeah. you know what I mean? Over I a, never run yeah. with something. Trust over me. a campfire, you know, we're just having a seed, having a pop here. Just, yeah. you know. Uh, but yeah, now uh, I got, I got, I got, I got to ask, I got to ask, uh, is there any, you know, is there anything, you know, if you just tell us just, you know, WT and I, you guys, you know, we won't tell anybody if there's any hey, little, we promise we, we won't say a word. If there's any little, you know, information you want to share with us, it's just between us four here. Uh, is there anything you can kind of just like slip out there? I don't know. Is there anything? I'd say two things. I'd say number one, a big leak, I guess, was that immutable, like you guys did get like a big announcement, so you know at least you were satisfied on that end. Mm -hmm. Number two, I think the only thing I'd say is we had Q1 at the end of Q. Sorry, no, I think at the first half of the year, our target was to get a pre-alpha out. And um, I remember the AMA on me and Derek. Someone asked, you know, if we were on track for um, a Q1 launch, right? Um, so obviously, um, I'd say that the fact that we had the pre-alpha registrations open at the time that we did probably is a good indicator of how much we are on track for the pre-alpha demo specifically. So mm -hmm. whether that means are we going to be launching that in June or in May, that's up to the community. But I mean, I guess that's the thing, the only thing I'd say. Yeah, I'm super excited to, to, awesome. to most oh, I'm can, super the excited. most I can give you guys. Okay. That's that's good. That's good. Uh WT, do you have any questions? Anything you wanted to add? No, nah, man. Thanks a lot for joining us and, and, and bearing with us and my stupid questions. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh you got you not guys are GOG royalty. So mm -hmm. if Cyrus was here, he would not be calling you peasants. He'd be saying sire <laughs> and, and 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 lady. Uh, so thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. You guys are absolute rock stars. I got to say again, thank you so much for for coming on and talking. You guys are so much fun and so knowledgeable. Great speakers. We got to take notes from them. They're 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 way better at this than we are. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, like just, um, you were talking about a Cadmus uh, piece, uh, uh, WT. Oh. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, uh, yeah, I'll put out the, uh, I'm going to put, when you get the YouTube video, I'm going to post it and then retweet my tweet with your YouTube link. And then I'll pick that. Uh, we'll go five days from now, five days from now, wh whenever you get the post out for your video all right. and if they have to comment on your video and like it, if they comment on your video yep. and like it, when I pick the retweet, they will qualify for the number 10 canvas display piece. Beauty. Beauty. Guys, that was that's awesome. So there you guys have it. Uh, make sure you uh, – we'll get it all out there when it's time. 
Uh, Ryan, uh, Kali, you guys are awesome. You guys are absolute, like I said, rock stars. This is so much fun. So informative. I Listen, this is one in the morning for me. That's how excited I was for this. I said, yo, I can't miss it. We got to do this. And uh, super, super thankful for you guys uh, being here. Is there anything you guys want to close up with that you want to get off uh, your chest, you want to say before uh, we shut her down? Yeah. Yep. I just, yeah. Um, I'm sure Kali is going to echo this as well, but we really appreciate, um, you know, Bruno, WT, the podcast you guys are doing. It's like one of the more unique type of content that we get in this space. Um, so not in this space, in our project. So, you know, week by week, people are very excited. It's like, guys, when are you going to release the next episode? So it's really awesome to see that. As well as that, you know, the um, ambassadors, everyone who's just a normal community member and they engage. And um, special shout out to my moderator team as well. I told them, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm going on Bruno's. I'll make sure to give you guys a shout out. So I have to do that as well. So thanks for all my moderators. They're honestly one of the best, if not the best moderator team I've seen in this space. And I genuinely mean that. Um, and yeah, that's all I had to say. I tell you, I, uh, you know, I, as you guys know, I do stream and, and the mods, mods in the community are incredible. They're a key to it. You know, welcoming people. They're, they're the ones that, you know, they put up with all the stuff, man. They do a great job. So I got, yeah, big shout out to the mods in the GOG. They are, uh, they're super tight lip too. I am hardcore <laughs> friends with these guys. They give me zero. <laughs> give me zero. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Ryan. Kelly, what about you? Uh, what, anything you want to close up with? Anything you want to say? Anything you want to get your chest? Yeah, look, guys, I just want to say a huge thank you for, well, having us on here for one, but also just everything that you both do for the community. Um, it's it's really something else. It's really, really special. Um, so, yeah, just thank you. Thank you to all of the community. And, yeah. Oh, that's really awesome. excited for the rest of the year. Uh, really appreciate those words for both you guys. Like I say, you guys know we're we're in GOG's corner. We're in your corner. We love, we love, love, love the community. Love the game, uh, and uh, I can't wait. I mean, like I said, we I have an entire stream that's just can't wait to get their hands on this and play it. And we're gonna be streaming it on Twitch a lot once you know it's obviously out there and, and, and we're allowed to. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. And uh, again, guys, you've been rock stars. You've been superstars. We love you and we appreciate everything you do. Thank you for coming on here. Like that's that's amazing. This is the first podcast you guys have been on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know. I've, gotten a, I've gotten a few requests from some people and um, this is my, definitely my first one thank you so. very much and you guys are naturals I mean I gotta start yeah. you know you guys they're, well they could what if they make their own and then you know they make their own podcast yeah you know <laughs> you guys are amazing you're perfect at it uh, WT anything you want to close up with oh man I'm super excited. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Let's go. Thank you so much, you guys. Honestly, I, I appreciate it very, very much. Guys, we're out of here. I want to say thank you if you made it this far. Thank you for watching the video. And we are out of here, you beauties. And we'll chat to you soon. Peace. Bye.